Hello, winners, and welcome once again to the Wrong Button Podcast. I'm very excited today to welcome Master of the Croto House, John Solcaro. Hi, what's up, guys? What's up? All right. Thank you so much for doing this for me. Um, sure. As one of my big things for doing this podcast is I love interviewing people, um, especially people that I really enjoy watching and you were by far my favorite and most watched streamer. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, so what I really wanted to go into today is one, a little bit how I found you. Mm. Um, I found you because I got Gundam Versus about three years ago, I think it was now. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, that's been a long time. It's been a long time, and it's it was very hard to find a community for that game. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching Fighters Ready. They were another streamer. And then they pinned you one day and you were doing a stream uh, in it every single day because you are, I would say, the one of the ambassadors for the Gundam games here in the West. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very excited. And what I wanted to do uh, is get the definitive John Solcro answers on Gundam, a little bit about your channel, and then just really what you like when it comes to uh, games, Gundam and uh anime as well because you do cover so much when you stream Absolutely. and so much in what you do mm -hmm. so for um, me uh I, I guess i could go into it a little bit uh, yeah so my background um i've been known as soul crow uh i compete in a lot of uh fighting game events uh, fgc events um i've been doing that since uh early ages of like 12 and then you know till till current really uh i started my uh rise so to speak in 2002 just going to different locals and stuff like that and um really in 2008 how i got started streaming um i used to be on a team called kick punch block and they are a local new york team um mm -hmm. i got started with that and they would go around um pretty much like other uh fgc streamers they'll go around to different majors and stuff and then what they would do is stream certain events for the games and uh you know do hosting and stuff like that. And I picked up a lot of the skills that I have now from just that experience. And uh, pretty much in 2011, that is when I started my channel uh, doing content. Um, not a lot of people know this, but my first game that I really got into and really uh, solidified myself to grow as a streamer was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. Um, I got to meet so many people and... From that, it kind of just spun into uh, growing a little bit more, growing more numbers, getting my first hundred people. And then over time, uh, we reached a thousand and, you know, we kept growing and now we're at like 3K. So 3K follows in Twitch. So, you know, it's sky's the limit here pretty much. That is, and that's actually really cool that um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, because I know that's blowing up over here now. Mm -hmm. I'm down here in DC. I know you said uh, New York, so you were mm -hmm. a New York team. Um, I'm just south of DC. I'm I'm in the suburbs. What oh, is okay. what are locals actually like? Because we don't we don't really have that here. So for an outsider looking in, I know a lot of FGC people go go down to your local locals. Yeah, and that's where you get in. <laughs> what is a local local? So a local is pretty much you go to maybe a local card shop or your local game store. Um, and if they're holding, like, let's say, casuals, which we call them um, Smash 2, they call them friendlies. Um, mm -hmm. People gather together, they play a certain amount of games. Maybe you like Street Fighter, maybe you like uh, Smash, and you just want to be around those types of people. Um, just come out one night, and if they're doing a, an event night, sit there, sign up, and, you know, talk and interact with people. That's pretty much a, what a local is. It's a, it's a social interaction of just games and people that love your games and you can you know level up and you know maybe take in a few tournament runs you know at your locals and you know it's very imperative to support any type of local scene if you have a local scene for street fighter and you like street fighter definitely support it because you know in this day and age a lot of stuff is going away and you know we don't have arcades anymore we don't have you know barely enough places to do games uh, and game events, so it's very imperative to go out and really support your local scene if you have one, you know? Yeah. Um, 
And one of the one of the crazy things that not even crazy, one of the, the mm. my favorite things about going to your streams because one, you always open it up for us who are watching, um, who are subscribed, mm. uh, who are in the Discord. You you open it up and you always make it very friendly to join. Um and that that's always great because you'll you'll sit there when you play us, um, especially for me, like I'm not big into fighting games, so for mm. me to do anything when I'm playing Gundam, it's very rudimentary and you're always like hey you're playing this suit you want to get the way it feels here mm -hmm. did that come about because you've been to so many locals or is that almost like nurturing helping baby take first steps into fighting games uh is that just be from the fact that we want fighting games to grow yeah for the most part um you know it's always been ingrained in me to help players mm -hmm. and you know it's one of those things where if you come off as arrogant or you come off as someone that's negative they're not going to receive your game well i think that's just in any any game that you go to or any community that you go to you want to receive proper care you want to receive you know positivity you don't want to go in negative with negative thoughts or anything like that um so when i try to open up my streams i try to do you know my basic monologue of who i am but mm -hmm. also try to be as welcoming as i can because you know just going in gundam for a second um, Gundam can be what you make it. And I say this in, in all seriousness, it can be what you make it because it can easily be positive and it can easily be negative because you're playing with someone else and mm -hmm. you want to be able to understand that you're playing with another person and people. Um, I try to make my, at least my space, which is a Twitch channel. Um, I try to make my space as welcoming as I can. I try to teach as much as I can. I might not be the most technical, but when it comes to just bringing people in and getting people to a starting point, I can say that I do well on that front. Um, whatever people decide to do after that, that is on them. I just wish them well. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people, especially from my community, you know, go from just starting out to now being, you know, monsters in their own right. They could beat me outright. And, I can't really say too much of anything, really. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, people need that. People need that positivity because, you know, everybody has their own agenda. And I just want people to play my game and I want people to talk about my game. And that's why I do that. And that makes complete sense now. Mm -hmm. Because you also come from a competitive circuit, I have to ask, is there mm -hmm. a is, is there a difference? Like, um, I also watch uh, Smug mm -hmm. when he does it because he has a great, I'm going to say stage personality, like almost like wrestling stage personality. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, when you go in and start going like, okay, I'm going to go competitive. And this is, this is me wanting to rank up. D do you bring out like stage mode or like super competitive? Just got to like, kind of go in there and I'm almost going to mm. say like aggression compared to you're more nurturing when everyone's starting out and you're trying to you're mean, fight people into a game. It's a rare occurrence where I get super competitive. Um, I haven't been like super competitive like that, like you described, since probably like 2016. <laughs> and um, the reason why I say that is because, you know, people don't want to watch super competitive play. They want to watch entertaining play. And I think that's just a, a whole thing across the board when you stream. People don't want to sit there, have you get serious and not say anything because people are focusing on the game if you're going to be serious. Um it's good to bring in entertainment value, like you said, Smug, with his, uh, you know, personality and stuff like that. Personally, I don't call it personality. I just think that's the way he is, personally. Um, him being in the East Coast and, you know. I think he's also has, from New York. Yeah, he's also from New York. So he has that attitude. Like, a lot of New Yorkers, if you know, have that attitude of just being direct and being, you know, upfront about a lot of stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I'm the same way in, in certain aspects, but I try to turn that down because, you know, not everybody's going to pick that up. Um, I try to be as entertaining as I can, mm -hmm. but not to the point where it's driving off people. Sure, I'll get annoyed here and there. If I lose, I'll be like, oh, damn, uh, maybe I should have done this. Or, you know, tell my partner, maybe you should have done this. I'll, I'll do that once in a while or a couple of times. But I try to make sure that, again, it's a positive and entertaining aspect to it instead of just ultra serious. Because, you know, with the state that everything has been recently mm -hmm. in the world, um, I just want people to really pick up the, on the game while we're here, while we're home. You know what I mean? When we start doing tournaments and going back to the fray, then I can see myself, you know, getting more super competitive and a little bit more aggressive. But for the most part, I really don't do that on stream too much. 
it's very rare that I actually do that on stream. Fair enough. No, I, I completely understand that. And delving into Gundam, because like I said, that's mm -hmm. how I found you. Um, you do Gundam streams probably, what is it, uh, almost every night? Yeah, every week. Uh, we do it Tuesday, Fridays, and uh, Sundays. Those are the official days. Um, Wednesday is pretty much an open day where I do a lot of other streams, like anime stuff, fighting game stuff. So you'll see different stuff on Wednesdays. Um, but for the most part, I just do Gundam. That is my main game. It has been my main game for many years, starting with uh, Full Boost. Uh, okay. And uh, it's been a it's been a ride. It's been a wild ride. And it it, it definitely looks that way, and it it does show here. Um, now, I'm going to go into the Gundam questions. Would you call yourself a variety streamer with an affinity towards fighting games, leaning towards Gundam? Or are you mostly just like a fighting game streamer? I would say, I would say it's a variety type of stream for me, um, with anime roots, of course, and Gundam roots, of course, uh, fighting games as well. Um, it's a good mix, and I try to keep it as a good mix. Uh, as of late, though, it hasn't been as good because I haven't put any fighters uh, besides uh, Gundam, which I do consider a fighter. Um, Besides that, I haven't put any other fighters like Grand Blue Versus or Street Fighter. I want to do that more uh, mm -hmm. over time. I probably will do that starting next month, uh, depending on how the patch is with the new characters and stuff like that for Grand Blue. Um, but I do mix it. I try to mix it as much as possible. Um, I don't want to play Gundam every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so giving that one day of just, you know, something different on Wednesday is, is a godsend to me because I got to sit there and play it and then also be entertaining. So you know, that's why I do Wednesdays as a side day. Makes you diversify. It also doesn't let you burn out. So Right. Exactly. Exactly that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and now seeing as you're like, I have to have a side day, let's jump into Gundam and I'm going to, we're sure. going to get some definitive answers here. Cause I know you've answered kind of here and there on stream. Mm -hmm. um, but I know sometimes you get, you get very like drawn apart. Cause it's like, you're still playing competitively. You're still teaching. Right. What is your gateway Gundam? Uh, what do you mean by, by just, the Gundam that I liked and that got me into it or yeah, the Gundam that, that got you in and you were like, I'm going to watch this thing. And then you're like, Nope, I, th th this is now what I'm watching. Cause this is great. I would say in, in terms of the Gundam, se uh, Gundam series that got me into it would be, um, eighth MS team. Uh, I remember watching it and I just fell in love with it. And you know, then Gundam wing came in and I fell in love with that too. Uh, G Gundam absolutely fell in love with it and was amazed by, just amount of the jokes that were coming out from that. But, you know, those three really brought me into Gundam and really got me started out really of just, you know, liking the series and liking the timelines and um, doing gunplay here and there. I'm not much of a builder. <laughs> so if you are thinking that I'm a builder, I'm not. I'm more of a pilot. I say this every time because I, I like the, the feel of just playing on a mobile suit and, and controlling that mobile suit and, you know, reenacting, you know, the pilots and how they feel. And I, I like that aspect of it. I like that Gundam aspect. Um, and, you know, doing Gundam Extreme versus Max Boost on or Full Boost, uh, that really helped me get into Gundam more because of that aspect. And it's funny you said because I know you always say it's always pilots ready. And yeah. um, I try to build because I, I think I got in. Mm -hmm. um, I got in really hard with Wing, and then I actually mm -hmm. went to uh, Stardust Memory. Ooh, um, nice. And I, it's always amazing because you're like, you're not like, I'm not much of a builder. I know you always uh, vampy bit me. Mm -hmm. uh, you always are promoting her. And it's one of those things where I'm like, I build a little bit here and there. And then I watch her do a build on stream. And I'm like, how are you building this perfect grade model with no flaws with like <laughs> 80 to 120 people watching you at any given second? And I can't do this with just me being in the room. So, so Vampy Bits Me is a good friend of mine. Um, she recently came out to, well, last year, uh, came out to New York uh, during, I think, Anime NYC. No, not Anime NYC. Uh, uh, New York Comic Con. One of those two. Um, and we hung out and stuff like that. So she's a very good friend. Um, she's much more of a builder than I am. She's very perfect in that regard. Uh, she does a lot more uh, of the Gumpless stuff and the um, core Gundam series stuff. So you'll probably see her around and stuff like that. Um, for me, I just stick with the uh, Gundam Extreme versus uh, games, and that's what I'm known for. 
and um, you know, it, it's just that's how the way it works. But she's a very good person, though. Oh, she seems that way. I'm always impressed by her builds. Um, now, I know you said uh, you said you started really with Eighth MS Team. Mm-hmm. What in that show? Because to me, like I, I only watched it, I think last year for the first time, oh, okay. and that's a that's a heavy show because that is you're you're talking they're doing Vietnam, yeah, and that's a heavy one. What about that show? Because I know when did you get into Gundam? Were you a little bit older? Like I think I was like sixteen, seventeen when I really started getting into Gundam. Oh, I was I was definitely young. I would say about mm, probably about twelve, okay, twelve eleven. Um, I remember just watching because at that time. Uh, anime, of course, was, you know, a little bit more well drawn, a little mm-hmm. bit more better in terms of dubs and subs, Japanese subs as well. Um, so a lot of anime at the time interests me in, in picking up Gundam. I always went for the mature themes. I, I always like processing what I'm watching. So at the time, you know, I I just saw 8th MS team and it really uh, spoke volumes to me and I really enjoyed just watching it and, and seeing the, the actual love story that was unfolding and the battles as well. And it, it just really impacted me from that, that point on. Um, Gundam Wing as well. Gundam Wing was very good. Uh, politically, it's it's amazing. If you really look at the character bonds and what they go through and what they believe, it's just amazing how well <laughs> the writing is for that show. It's just amazing. Like, go back to it if you watch it again. Mm-hmm. current day just go back to it and really sit down and listen to what they're saying it is amazing as a kid you it'll just fly over your head i know it did for me mm-hmm. but going back as an adult now and i'm 30 by the way um you know it just makes sense it it really clicks and i love the gundam politics um in a lot of the gundam shows like unicorn of course and uh even thunderbolt has a, some type of politics in it um but i just I love the listening. politics thunderbolt Oh yeah, it's 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 amazing. It really is amazing. Then the music, oh boy, the music it, it it puts me in. It makes everything just a perfect mold, you know. Which is odd for me because I know a lot of people really bash on the jazz of Thunderbolt. Um, I don't know how. I don't. I grew up with jazz, so it's it's one of those things where it's an acquired taste, especially freeform jazz, which is yes. the base of the music of the show. A lot of people are not going to understand it, but. Me growing up in a jazz household, I get it. It it clicked with me immediately. Um, also, I got to experience the music live. Uh, shout out to Anime NYC. Uh, they've been in operation for a couple of years now. Um, biggest anime convention, one of the biggest anime conventions here in New York City. Um, they do a lot of Gundam stuff. And their first year, they did Gundam Thunderbolt. Um, they had a whole concert. And they had people who worked on the music there. And experiencing that live is just an experience i would say to anybody listening to this or you know if you're a gundam fan and you have the time to go out to a anime convention and they're doing something special for gundam like a concert sit there and enjoy it it's the best experience i i kid you not it is one of the truest experience you can really get to listening to the music live it's amazing that that definitely sounds that way. I think I've I've seen one concert like that. It was like a Legend of Zelda concert I had a friend take Ooh, me to. Yeah. Live music is, is really good. It's really good, especially video game music. So and that, when it's something good... that you care about, yeah. It is you're you're completely right. It is fantastic and one of the, the best parts there. Mm-hmm. Um now I know you said the the politics for it. Um and you're right, I haven't watched Gundam Wing mm-hmm. uh since I was a, a wee lad for the most part. And it, for me it was like the wing Gundam is really cool looking. Death Scythe is really cool looking. Absolutely. Um, what about, and one of my favorite things is uh, you will go back and you will constantly uh, rag on double O, not necessarily the story, but Setsuna Asahi, uh, right? I said that right? Yes. Uh, Setsuna Asahi. Um, and you will rag on him. How do you feel about, because I think you're talking about hero seed. feel I think, the same. I think, I think you're talking about seed. I, like double O, I like. I think seed is the one that you're referring to. I no, hate. Seed. I honestly hate seed. <laughs> well, I know. You, I know you hate seed. We're gonna get on that because mm. I I've never watched seed because everyone tells me how bad it is. But mm. um, how do you feel about Gundam main characters? Because like hero mm. and Setsuna, like they both feel like they have no personality. Well, in, in terms of that, I I think uh, Setsuna definitely needs to get an upgrade if they ever do the series again or uh 
remodel him, uh, they definitely need to put him in a more attractive light in terms of the just personality. Um, it's very crucial when you're doing an anime and you're creating a, uh, something to have people watch to have an enjoyable cast of characters. You want to be able to be like, I remember this guy from like years ago in this anime. And he was really fun to listen to and very cool to to see in action. Um, and Setsuna is just not like that. Setsuna is just very bland. He's a Gundam nut. He's, he's He doesn't really have a personality. He's just for the mission. That's it. Um, same thing with uh, Mikazuki from Iron Blooded Orphans. Um, same thing. He doesn't really have a personality. He follows orders. That's about it. Um, everybody else around those characters are really the play on. Mm -hmm. um, they really make the show. And it, it sucks that the main characters are not great, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that the show is not watchable. I would say still watch, you know, IBO and still watch Gundam double O because those, those shows are really good. At least season one for IBO, it's not season two, just clarify. But, um, these shows are still good. They're still introductory for people to get into Gundam. So I can still say with every ounce of my heart, still watch these shows, still support the shows, um, even if the main characters are <laughs> extremely bland, you know? It's so tragic that some of like, the, the best shows where they do have really bland characters mm -hmm. um, are there. So I, I do get that now. When you when you watch a Gundam, um, I know you said political intrigue. Um, let's focus on the mecha for one moment. What what style of Gundam like do you go for? Because I know when you played you played versus, and now when you play Maxi Boost, mm -hmm. uh, I know you main you've mained the Thunderbolt full armor, yes, and the Zeta full armor, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, my secondary for uh, Gundam Extreme versus Maxi Boost on. Uh, would have to be, especially at the moment, Raphael, actually. Um, I've been enjoying that. But I do play a little bit of uh, Full Armor Double Zeta. It's, uh, it's a mean soup for me. But to answer your question, um, pretty much I go for the characters first, uh, the pilots first in their attitude. But also um, after that, the mech design, um, anything with like a heavy, heavy beam, I like. Anything with just a, a, a good offensive in terms of rockets, uh, anything with lasers, I'll, I'll just automatically pick up. Anything with a sword, too, I'll, I'll instantly pick up. Um, even though I don't use it as much, uh, the characters with swords, like uh, the Red Frame Astray RD, which has a, a good sword. I think he's the only one that I use with a sword um, consistently. Um, other than that, I, I like anything that's stylish. Anything that I could like Put on the field, people get scared immediately, or they just have to like choose either die or just run away. Anything like that, I, I really enjoy. So now I, I take it you're a fan. You said stylish. Are you a fan of? Because I know the big thing with uh, the original Gundam mobile suit when uh, the RX seventy eight came out was mm. it could use that beam saber. Are you more of a fan of like, no, it pulls out a physical sword or do you like the beam lightsaber sword that it pulls out? I mean, I, I, I never really liked the beam sabers. I always thought that the design for the beam sabers were really and eh, that they're, they're OK. But anything that's like. Realistic, like, let's say someone draws out a, a actual sword, like I, I want to see that coolness. I want to see that difference. I don't want to see the same thing every time. Mm -hmm. I want to see that. Hey, this is so-and-so Gundam and this is what it could do. It's very special in that regard. You know what I mean? Like it does like a, a special beam or a special uh, sword. I want to be unique in that way, you know? So I always like to see if Gundams are unique in that way too. There's not a lot of Gundams that are like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's getting a lot better with, of course, the build fighter uh, entries and um, even IBO had some difference, uh, different suits here and there. Um, so it's getting oh, like a little using bit the axes. Yeah, 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 it's getting a little bit better. Um, no, and that's it's really cool to hear you say that because it's always one of those where I know some people are like, okay, now it now it's silly when it pulls out like a, just a giant katana. Yeah. Or, <laughs> what was it? The goof custom almost has like a machete that it pulls out. 
which, which I think is still the the best one of the best scenes. Like when the golf is attacking the squad, the eighth MS team squad, mm-hmm. and uh, the, he gets uh, Shiro and stuff like that, and all his system comes cuts out and stuff like like that. It's just amazing. It's amazing to see that art and just the psychological aspect to it. it it's amazing. It now, really is. Mm-hmm. when it comes to when it comes to main characters for Gundam, mm-hmm. uh, I know especially in the in the Universal Century timeline, mm-hmm. there's always the play on new types. Then they have the cyber new types, and they have I think it's the traditional ace, which is just a really good pilot. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you enjoy seeing one of those more than the other, or are they all kind of like equally as enjoyable for you? Um, they're equally enjoyable with, with the exception of cyber new types, because I think they're, <laughs> they're, they're sometimes can be a little bit annoying depending, <laughs> depending on the character. But, uh, besides cyber new types, I like new types. They're, they're pretty cool to watch. Um, I really go for the aces, uh, the aces, because I like that realism of just watching a character grow. Um, for example, mm-hmm. one of my favorite characters of any Gundam series would have to be uh, E.O. Fleming from Gundam Thunderbolt. He's just naturally interesting. I like characters that can be like, hey, you know, this is me. This is what who I am. I'm not going to front for you. I'm not going to BS. I'm just going to be in your face and tell you how it is. And, you know, this is my, my style. I like that. I, I honestly, when I first saw the character, I was like, this guy is, he's cocky. I like it. He's cocky. He's really, he's really in there. So, you know, when I saw him being an ace and piloting the full armor Gundam, it was just a, a good combination. And that's one of the reasons why I got into using the suit and, and really donning it for myself because I like that style in Gundam Thunderbolt. That's, that's no, no one can say otherwise um, not to use the suit to me because that, that was one of the suits that I picked up early on and very immediately as soon as I saw it. And it, actually, it's great that you say that because um, I I love the I, I actually have all the manga for Thunderbolt sitting here next to me. It's Ooh, it's, nice. Nice. it's my favorite series as well for a plethora of different reasons. Nice. Um, and I, I think, like you said, it, it's fun to watch the Ace, but this was one of the few times where you got a because Daryl Lorenz is kind of a cyber new type. Like they're trying to find a way to create it, mm-hmm. right? And we get to see. Well, what if you could plug someone into a to a mecha fighting somebody who's good fighting the better mecha, mm-hmm. and that was a, a great way to do it. So I am so glad that Eo gets that you're giving him some love because I love the full armor. Um, the Atlas design grew on me towards the end because in the beginning I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I, I think Atlas was cool. Uh, Bandit Flowers was a really good movie as well. Um, I really feel Atlas didn't do as much as I would hoped. That's why I don't really use it too much personally, but I still enjoy it. I, I, I can still go in and, and look at it and say, hey, this is really a good suit as well. Um, but it pales in comparison to the full armor Gundam for me. Um, the full armor can just do so much. And I don't know if you remember in, in uh, uh, the first movie, mm-hmm. December Sky, uh, when you first see the full armor Gundam move around and he's, you know, going to these snipers and he's they have like a POV style of one of the snipers just going crazy. And he's like, I can't shoot this thing. It's, it's just moving around. And then after a while, you see it move up closer and closer and closer and, until it gets in front of your face. And it shows like the pilot just being overcome by fear. I like that. To me, it was just the eye opening that I need of just this suit is cool. And this show is cool. And it really got me hooked to watch more. And I think the other thing there is like it's the full armor, and every time you see full armor Gundams, they're always a little bit slower, but it's in space. There's no gravity, so it, you always feel a sense of speed. You're like, no, you you hit like a freight train, and you are a freight train. Like it's Absolutely. like once it hits you, and that that quote that he says, once you hear the jazz, is all over. Like it, it's it's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing to have a character like that like i don't know why people don't like eo i can understand why but to me that that brought me to the fold that just brought me to thunderbolt in a good way it's 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 amazing i can't say any more on it <laughs> nope you're right I, I think the the complaint I've, I've heard is like he doesn't feel human but i'm like no he's oh, he's, he's detached he's himself human. 
he is superhuman compared to like all these cyber new types that don't feel real or realistic at all. No, oh. he is superhuman. Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. So going into um, since I know you said you gravitated towards um, you gravitated towards the 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 Thunderbolt, the heavy suit there um, using uh, the Thunderbolt full armor. Um, and I know you said you used that on Gundam versus and maxi boost on came out. Now, I actually had no idea before Gundam versus was the first actual Gundam fighter I'd ever heard of before watching your show and then moving over into maxi boost on. And I know you've kind of answered this on Twitter, but you and the rest of the Gundam community were so excited uh, for maxi boost compared to Gundam versus like you were like, hey, Gundam versus yay, because we're getting a Gundam game in the West. What is it that makes maxi boost this massive draw? for the Gundam community um, mm. in general. I think since we've been playing since uh, Full Boost, and I know a lot of people have been playing even longer than that with the original Gundam Versus game, uh, Gundam Extreme Versus, uh, mm-hmm. that title. Um, it's just the competitive aspect one. Um, you know, once you start playing it for the first time, it's like, wow, this is a new experience. This is an experience that obviously you don't really see here in the States too often. And, um, you see it a lot in Japan and you're like, wow, this is cool. I, w- I want to, you know, want to see it here in the States. And we're finally getting something like that. And I always say this uh, to everybody that's interested in Gundam Extreme versus Maxi Boost On. This is, is, is an experience that you will not find anywhere else. It's 2v2 Gundam action. It is something that you honestly would see this in the arcade and that would be it. You wouldn't have any way to take it home, but the fact that we're able to get Maxi Boost on and even Gundam Versus, as much as I dislike that game for a lot of reasons, um, it's still uh, an enjoyable experience to see on the consoles and people get their hands on. And, you know, I really hope that, you know, Namco really expands on this and really sees the hype for it. Um, before Maxi Boost on came, we were just uh, waiting. We were always talking about you know, when's the next game or when are we going to get the actual game, you know, the actual experience? Because Gundam Versus, as good as it it was to some people, to a lot of the hardcore fans, it left out a lot of stuff um, because we were, uh, of course, coming in from Full Boost where, you know, we had a lot of more popular suits and the popular mechanics and stuff like that. And that held us over for many years and it was really good. Everybody was content with that. So going into Gundam Versus, it was just a slap in the face to see dumbed down mechanics uh the net code not being good or suits being left out and you know people not being able to pick the actual suits they wanted um it really hurt a lot of people in pretty much interest in the game um so when maxi boost was announced and you know really presented to us it was like a, a new day a brand new century uh to, to say the least you know um, I remember just going crazy. I was like, yo, this is this can't be real. Like I, I, I wouldn't have expected because I remember uh shout outs to Namco. Uh, I know a few people from there. I remember going to Anime NYC uh two years ago when they first started and talking with uh the community uh, manager, Cyrus, and a couple other people about Gundam. I had mentioned Mac not even not only Maxi Boost on, I mentioned um extreme versus two as well and we were all talking about oh how cool this would be to be in the states i know a lot of people would like it and come to find out two years later you know two to three years later we we finally get maximus on and we're able to sit here in our house and and in our homes to really practice and, and really play online and come together as a community to really enjoy the actual experience of gundam so it, it's just amazing how far we've come and you know, I really hope that Bandai does more of these games over time. Now, is is Maxi mm-hmm. Boost? Because I know you said, uh, Ma- especially Maxi Boost on, is bring it home. Is mm-hmm. it just like an arcade game over in Japan? So yeah. So how it started is pretty much from, uh, you know, even before Gundam Extreme Versus, uh, even before that, there was a lot of just arcade play. You couldn't really play this at home, and then they brought it to the PS3, of course, and then. Uh, with full boost and, and all that other stuff and PS2 and stuff like that. The moment that they got it into the consoles, uh, that's really when the player base started to jump off and stuff like that. And, uh, 
you know, it was still ported into Japan. Like you, if you were in the States, you were obviously importing it and stuff like that. And that's how I was back in like 2013, 2014, just importing this stuff. And, um, you know, how I found out about, you know, full boost was from a friend who was saying, Hey, you know, maybe you might like this game as a fighter too. And, um, I took the interest because at the time I was getting all of these other imported games. Like, for example, I used to play Dengeki Bunko, um, Finding Climax Ignition. And uh, that was also a- another good game that I do a miss deeply that I don't play. Uh, but I was getting all these inputs and I was like, hey, let me check out Gundam. And it just hooked me the moment I, I started playing and playing on my stick. And, you know, it-, it was just one of a kind. I had never played a game like that. And uh, for me to be able to play it at home was a really good uh, prospect to it. So I'm really glad that Bandai uh, gave us the chance to really experience it here in the West. And, um, you know, hopefully in the future, hopefully we can get like a a good massive tournament going and, you know, get like a tournament Rambats going uh, for all regions. I would love to see that. Love to see like a circuit for this game because it deserves to be in a esports spotlight it's not yet but i would love to see it happen at some point i was like i remember the first year versus came out uh i was watching evo and it was it wasn't on main stage at all Uh, yeah it it looked like people like literally just sitting down a few tvs um because i remember they they even there because they mentioned your stream stream like hey like go watch this like he's a huge like just play this game play this amazing game um and I remember watching like the American guys go in there like, yeah, we're really excited. And then you saw the Japanese players come in and the <laughs> Japanese players sat down perfect then and like got up and walked away. And it was it was one of the most soul crushing things I've ever watched. Because like, there there like is a power dynamic uh, from the Japanese to America. That That's always going to be a thing because, you know, it started over there. and They're more seasoned over there. But uh, I think that gap is closing very, very shortly. Um, not yet. It, it's still... Still a ways to go, but now that we are pretty much on the same wavelength in terms of uh, start time, in terms of the console, um, mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a lot more foreign players be at the speed of Japanese players. Um, but let's see. Hopefully in the future it'll get better. But um, yeah, Evo, Anime Evo, uh, the Brett, uh, he also streams uh, uh, one of the pioneers, I would say. Uh, for Gundam in general, um, he pretty much put the West Coast on his on his back and really introduced the game to them. And he's one of the sole originators of just the Gundam tournaments and, you know, bringing this game over to the West. So if it wasn't for him, this game would not get the proper shine. I'll say that, you know, just instantly. Um, for me, I like to compare myself to him in terms of uh, just what he's done in the West. But for me, it would be the East. Uh, but at a smaller scale, <laughs> since I've, it's only been online, um, I've been able to get more people online and more people invested into the game just based off what I do. And uh, I would say I'm one of the few people in the East Coast that honestly do it. There's other people, too, uh, mm-hmm. like Maho. Maho's good. He does a lot of the Gundam um, showcases, mm-hmm. explaining the suits and stuff like that. And uh, he's the only person that I know that's in the East Coast that does that. Uh, other than that, it would be just me and him in the East at the moment. Now, would you say that the Brett is your Char? Uh, <laughs> not really. I, I don't. I don't have uh, any rivalries against people. Um, but I, I do think that uh, he's an interesting guy and an interesting player. I've played with him uh, more than once, so it's not too bad. <laughs> and previously, before before we jump on uh, for the, for the remainder of this, because I know you said. Um, mm-hmm talking about just japan versus america when it comes to fighting games i'd like to go into your side of fighting games as well sure um with with this have you i know you said eventually at one point you'd like to reach out and get all the gundam streamers uh together to do like a were you guys gonna do like a tournament or is it gonna be like a cage match how are Uh, you i i I think that would be a very interesting thing to do i would like to see uh pretty much all of the top streamers of the game um in one room and whether it be shuffle or free teams, I would love to see just the, the top streamers go at it. And uh, we can all show our perspectives on what would happen if so-and-so would play this guy or what would happen if, you know, this guy was in the room. I would love to see that. I love stuff like that. 
And if we could collab on that, I would really love to see it. Um, I, I love anybody that's working on Gundam and, and showcasing it the right way. So I, I really appreciate it, all the other streamers of the game. And, you know, if you are listening to this, I, I really want that to happen. So <laughs> let, let's get it going. Definitely. Start tagging people. Well, that's what we'll make the mission of like, hey, get them in this. Um, that's up to that's up to people. That's up to people. If people want to do it here in the West, uh, gather all of the top streamers for uh, NA and just go ham. We could. We definitely could. That w- that would be fantastic to watch all the way around. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know we've talked a lot about Gundam. I want to switch gears to a little bit because you said um, that I know starting next month you're looking at getting back into uh, a more of a variety of fighting games. You mentioned uh, Street Fighter. I've seen you play Tekken and mm-hmm. Grand Blue Versus, and the other big one I've seen you play is Soul Calibur Six. Yes, Soul Calibur Six. Yes. Okay. Totally lost which one uh, came out. Now, when mm-hmm. it comes to looking for a character there, when mm-hmm. you, when you play a fighter, what do you gravitate towards? Uh so pretty much in in fighting games, there are arch- archetypes like mm-hmm. keep away characters, uh, rush down, in the balance of the two, of course. I always go for the rush down characters. I like characters that will be in a person's face and have tools to uh, keep them busy so that I can think of more strategies. Um, I do play in a lot of, like, I would say NRS games like Mortal Kombat and uh, Injustice. I do play keep away more so than rush down. It's just a little bit easier for me to do. Uh, I guess it's because of the type of game. It's it's a keep out game uh, for most of NRS's games. Um, but for the most part, how I gravitate is just through rushdowns and if the character looks cool and has cool combos and stuff like that. Now, are you more of a fan of mm-hmm. the anime fighter versus, because I know you a little bit of a Mortal Kombat versus, I don't know, would that just be like a, a standard CG um, fighter? So for me, like the games that I am heavily interested in are anime games 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, anime games that keep me content are Under Night and Birth, ST, of course. Uh, now I know it's called Uniclear, <laughs> so I do play it a little bit. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, I do play as well, uh, but not often. Um, uh, what else? Guilty Gear. Um, I'm waiting for Guilty Gear Strive. I got some combos on Twitter. <laughs> Thankfully, I was able to do that during the closed beta. I love that game. Hopefully, it gets better with the uh, better mechanics over time. But um, I'm strictly anime fighter all the way. Okay. Uh, you'll see me play like games like Tekken here and there. Um, I can play Tekken, but I'd rather play with the people I know. Um, mm-hmm. Soul Calibur Six. I have always been invested in Soul Calibur um, since Soul Calibur Two days. Mm-hmm. So you know, going back to the franchise with Six and, and also Five, which I adore really a lot, um, is just a good thing for me. And um, when I did stream Soul Calibur Six, it was a very good crowd too. Um, I miss playing it, so maybe next month um, I'll go back into doing Soul Calibur. Um, and uh, for the most part, I really want to go back to Grand Blue Versus uh, because of the new characters in Season 2 DLC. Um, but for the most part, it'll it'll just be Grand Blue Versus probably next month. Now, I know you said Soul Calibur 2. Uh, that was also probably my gateway for any fighting game. I remember getting that oh, one. Nice. <laughs> what What system did you have it for? Uh, I remember playing it on the Dreamcast. One of them on the Dreamcast. I think it was on the Dreamcast, if I'm not mistaken. Because I know two Soul Calibur two. Depending on what you got, it was you could either play as what was it, it was um no Xbox. Right, right, right. It was okay. the Xbox. Okay, okay. I, I was forgetting. Uh, I mean, the was of Dreamcast. Yeah, yeah. So I was Spawn. Um, I had the the Spawn uh, character. And the reason why I remembered, I was like, I I remember playing it on the Dreamcast, but that was three. Uh, two was on the Xbox that I had got, and uh, I remember the first time that I had got it was through Christmas. I was at my uncle's house at the time, and he just gives me a copy of, of Soul Calibur 2. I was like, I don't have an Xbox. He was like, you do now? <laughs> I was like, are you serious? <laughs> so when I got home that night, because uh, I, I spent the night, when I got home, um, the Xbox was waiting there for me, and then you know I got my Christmas present, and you know, I started playing, um, you know, Soul Calibur 2 with my brother. And uh, I, I like Lizard Man for whatever reason. Right? He just gravitated towards me in that series. And uh, I used to play Lizard Man a lot. So, And that's that was, definitely uh, a character. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty fun character. 
yeah, it's not one that you're used to seeing. Because remember, it used to be like everyone oh, Keelik always got banned because it's like stop being cheap. <laughs> um, I, I've never been a Keelik fan. I could use them, but I, I've always liked the Sword and Shield characters or Axe, anything like that. So that that's more to me. Keelik I always thought was cheap too. So, but uh, as soon as I learned how to like guard impact a lot of stuff, you know, I, it didn't really matter to me to to get hit by them anymore. So, you know, it got a little easier. <laughs> Now, I know you said you're really excited for Grand Blue because you said Anime Fighter. We're going Grand Blue uh, season two is coming out. Yes, and uh, Guilty Gear Strive. Uh, mm-hmm. To hit on Guilty Gear Strive, yeah, because I I tried playing it once a long time ago and I, I didn't get a feel for it. Mm. But I remember hearing the news um, based on some podcasts that the creator said, "I want to create like he wanted to change the way the gate the game felt." When it comes to a new iteration of a fighter, do you just want updated characters, updated rosters, or do you like it when they maybe change a core mechanic to how the game behaves? Well, it it really depends on where they're going with it. Um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, Guilty Gear Strive, that is the new one coming out. I have recently got to try the new beta uh, earlier this year. Um, it's a good game. It's still Guilty Gear, but however, there's a lot of mechanics that they change in terms of getting new players in, which I understand that that's, that's totally fair. And I know they want to get a new base of players to play the game. Um, But for me, how I feel about it, if you change core mechanics, if you change around certain things, um, you know, you're leaving a, a side of your player base that is always going to support. And, you know, you shouldn't change too much. Don't change too much that it gets weaker. Um, change it for the appropriate ways like there's ways to change a a game without taking the actual substance away Um, and that's one of the things i'm kind of worried about with guilty Gear strive coming out uh next year um i don't want it to be too easy i'd rather the mechanics change a little bit but i can still understand why they're going about it that way they want to make it more accessible more watchable and It'll definitely happen. Um, I just hope that they take the right steps to make it work. Uh, but for me, I'd rather them do mechanic changes and maybe some put in some cool characters and that'll keep my interest, you know? That would you, going on from that one, uh, would you then prefer it if maybe they had a, if you went online and said, let's let's say we're going to play, you can play like, strive mode or you can play like classic mode would you prefer something like that i I hate stuff like that actually okay Uh, the reason being is because when you have a a tournament setting Mm -hmm. um what mode do you pick (laughs) what mode is the official mode and then if you let's say if you pick this mode then you got to cater to the people that play this this other mode it's not a it's not a good look and when you're prepping a tournament Mm -hmm. um you have to have everything going if you have a lot of people at your tournament you can't just say and switch and and change your mind to say oh let's do this mode because this mode doesn't work is people are not going to hear that if your people are playing money to go to your event they want to see it properly done so um modes like that are i would say any ftc person would be like no don't do it keep it to one central thing that is what guilty gear has always been um been like just that one central hardcore fight fest and that's that's pretty much it you know and and that definitely when when you say it like that i'm like oh no that makes complete sense um now to to wrap this up because i know we're getting at the end of the hour and i greatly appreciate it Mm -hmm. um i guess my final my final question here to leave us on is when you when it comes to getting a game because i know um i play gundam and you create a room and it's always super easy to to find a match that way um or that i've seen a lot of different opinions on how a how a hub is done almost for fighting games uh, mm-hmm. like you play a shooter you go i want to play this game i want to play this game mode and the game goes bam here's everyone else in this game mode here's a random match mm-hmm. how do you prefer in a fighting game to go out and find to find a match to play against other people um i mean so you know what i what i like to do um mm-hmm. is basically I, I do my own thing. So I'll open up my own lobbies and have people play with me. Or, you know, if I'm doing my off time, like today, I, I have my off time. I'll just do mm-hmm. private rooms and 
do player matches or with people and stuff like that and just close it off. Um, I always like to do ranked if I can. Ranked in any fighting game will always help you uh, understand the game at its entirety. It would always un- help you understand what you need to do to get better. Um, Gundam is the same aspect. If you go into rank right now, uh, it's going to teach you, automatically teach you how to move, how to jump, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. And that is the best aspect to any fighting game that you can really get. Um, it's going to just tell you the, the whole thing. Um, I know a lot of people do the maxi boost on uh, missions, which they do have a tutorial on how to play the game and stuff like that, but they don't teach you the actual game on a player to player basis. They teach you how to play against computer, but they don't mm-hmm. teach you how to play against actual humans, which is detrimental to any growth of a player. If you don't know how to play against people, it's very bad. Uh, so this is why I, I really make rooms and, uh, do all that I do for Gundam because I want players to actually, you know, get up, you know, go to different communities, not just mine, you know, interact with players and and see how it's done. Because once you are able to see how people move, how people play, you'll get invested into it and you, it'll make you want to build friendships and, and do rooms and who knows, out of that, they'll make you want to stream. I, I mean, for me, it's just experiencing the game firsthand and doing it myself and seeing how other players played back in the day, it really, it really left a good impression on me. And, you know, in the future, I would love to do more tournaments and, you know, more offline events for the game here in the East coast. And um, I'm ready to make that jump uh, as soon as, you know, the whole COVID thing, you know, dies down, I'm mm-hmm. ready to make that jump um, anytime. And, uh, you know, I, I love this game and it's something that will stick with me for, you know, for as long as I live, I really do enjoy uh, Gundam Versus. So, you know, it's, it's always a pleasure. Good. I'm I'm glad. And like I said, I want to thank you again one more time for being here. Uh, um, for and- welcoming me. I, I really do appreciate the, you, you know, you bearing <laughs> with me and you bringing me on. I really appreciate that. Of course. Now, uh, one of my favorite things that I like to do is I know where to find you because I, I watch you, um, even if I'm just lurking because I'm working. Mm. Um, where can we find you? What, where can we find you and what will you be doing? Uh, so... The best way is to find me, Sokuro. Uh, pretty much would be Twitter at Sokuroki, S-O-L-K-U-R-O-I. Uh, that is my Twitter. Uh, my Twitch also, uh, twitch.tv slash Sokuro, S-O-L-K-U-R-O. Uh, I am usually there every week with Gundam. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays are my official days. Sometimes we add in Thursdays and some Saturdays. I'm not going to be on there tonight because tonight's Saturday. So I'm not going to be in there tonight, but uh, definitely check in with the schedule. I do have the schedule up on my channel and uh, feel free to come through the discord, which are both on uh, my Twitch page and on my Twitter page. Uh, If you do want to come through the community and ask questions, we would love to have you guys uh, come out and stuff like that. All right. And of course, Thank you, winners, once again. I will make sure a list to uh, everything that John just uh, Sokro just said is down there on the bottom below this. And you can, of course, like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Built to Fail, and listen to this on YouTube, Spotify, Podbean, and iTunes. Thank you once again, Mr. Sokro, for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, uh, giving me the invite to come on. Appreciate it. Of, of course. And I'd love to have you again, especially as newer fighters come out. Um, and you get back into locals because I'd love to hear stories about fun locals from you and just how that actually goes. Cause that's Absolutely. Let me know. a really interesting one. Thank you guys all once again, so much for joining me. Remember that you're all winners out there and keep it weird. Have a good day, everybody.